Well, meanwhile, there have been widespread allegations of Israeli disinformation on the ongoing operations in Gaza. Reporters from the Wall Street Journal and the Washington Post claim to have received deliberately misleading communications from officials within the military, specifically saying Israeli soldiers had entered Gaza. Well, that ground operation never materialized. We can now bring in Daniel Pomerant, CEO of Honest Reporting, a group monitoring global media coverage of Israel. Thank you for joining us on the programme. Um, so reporters within Israel are saying the story of a ground operation was a deliberate ruse to trick Hamas. Is that true, do you think? You know, I don't know if that's true, but I can tell you that when I heard rumors of, uh, of ground troops entering, I called up uh, several people in the spokesperson's units, as did my team. It took us about five minutes to verify that that wasn't true. I think what we may have here is an example of journalists doing what they've been doing throughout this conflict, which is running with the story that they want to tell. A dramatic story of a ground invasion beats a story of uh, a press release that they misunderstood. But uh, a basic confirmation would have... Uh, would, would have uh, revealed that that wasn't the case. So do you think that many Western media outlets simply take Israeli government statements at face value without subjecting them to proper scrutiny? No, I think that they take statements at face value that they want to believe. They want to believe in a ground invasion. Another thing they want to believe is that Israel is killing Palestinians. That's patently false. Hamas is killing Palestinians. They fired some 2,000 rockets at Israel, but a third of their rockets land right in Gaza. On the first day, it was confirmed that 17 people, including three children, were killed by a Hamas rocket. The figures that Hamas gives to the press, they have never given one shred of proof that any of those figures were the result of Israeli strikes. And the press should be asking those questions. It's a terrible tragedy that people are dying. It's an awful crime against humanity. And the people of Gaza are suffering immensely. And the international press and the international community has an obligation to push Hamas to say who is actually causing these casualties. And if it is Hamas, we have to hold them to account or else they'll do it again. So how much of a role is information warfare playing in this conflict, would you say? A tremendous amount. You know, almost all the information we have coming out of Gaza comes from the Gaza Ministry of Health. But that is actually an arm of Hamas. Hamas, the press often doesn't point out, is a terror organization that's on the same international lists as ISIS and the Taliban. I'm talking about the lists from the U.S., the U.K., the E.U., and uh, Australia, Canada. If but ISIS not all countries, figures, of course. I'm sorry? Not all countries around the world consider Hamas a, a terrorist organization. Uh, almost, the, almost every government in the Western world does consider Hamas a terror organization, including, by the way, uh, Egypt, which is not in the Western world, um, but, uh, but agrees with that assessment because they have to live next door to Hamas. We would not accept these kind of figures coming from, say, ISIS without double-checking them. People double-check Donald Trump like crazy, as they should. Everything should be double-checked. Why we don't double-check figures coming from Hamas is not clear to me, but we should, just as we should double check figures from Israel and from uh, every everyone that we publish uh, data from. So do you see a, a disconnect between the largely neutral um, pro-Israeli media coverage and public opinion in Western countries? We've seen plenty of pro-Palestinian protests in recent days, haven't we? Well, I, I wouldn't say the coverage is neutral when you use phrases like both sides. Both sides is, on the one hand, Israel that announces its attacks in advance as a rule. If, attack, if, an attack, if, if a, a strike happens or something explodes and it wasn't announced in advance, chances are about 99% that it wasn't from Israel. And by the way, many of these residential houses collapsed not because of an Israeli attack, but because Hamas had built warfare tunnels under those houses and those tunnels collapsed under the stress. It's... Uh, when we, um, when we don't ask the right questions, we don't get the right data. Now, in the world, when you say both sides, you're comparing a side like that, that's highly professional, gives warnings, is highly cautious, versus a group that's on the same international lists as ISIS and the Taliban. Those groups should not be seen in the same way. We don't put coalition forces on the same footing as ISIS and Syria. And by the way, the Syrian people suffered tremendously under ISIS, just as the Palestinian people suffer tremendously under Hamas. Anyone who's truly pro-Palestinian, and I believe that most Israelis, including myself, are much more so than organizations in the world that give Hamas a free pass. If you're truly pro-Palestinian, you need to hold Palestinian leadership to account so that they can have a better life. 
What are your thoughts on how governments are taking their, their view on this conflict? We're seeing very cautious statements coming from Europe and the U.S. calling for restraint and largely supporting Israel's right to defend itself. Can you see that line hardening as the conflict continues? Well, of course, um, countries around the world always become uh, nervous when they when they see casualty figures mounting or when they see a conflict continuing for more than a certain amount of time. But I think the reason for the patience in this case is that everyone in the world realizes that Hamas is a fully funded arm of Iran and Qatar, that this is part of Iran's geopolitical effort to create discord in the Middle East, and that by putting a stop to that, this makes the entire world a somewhat safer place. Here in Israel, we've been running to bomb shelters almost nonstop. And, and as you mentioned in, in your package, a number of people here have died. Uh, this is a problem for everybody. And Iran is looking to export this danger to the entire world. We, as a global community, have to put a stop to this for everyone's sake. Daniel Pomerant, CEO of the media monitoring organization Honest Reporting. Thank you for sharing your views on the conflict. And let's hope for a peaceful resolution very soon. Thank you for having me. Thank you.